to the celebrated nightly news, news of Calaveras, Calaveras County. County. I'm John. And I'm Sarah. And thanks for joining us again on a Tuesday night. Now, this is one of those Tuesdays where Board of Supervisors had a pretty light schedule, and then they had one of those study sessions on the general forever. plan that just goes on, on out and on infinitum. And so, on. We will have video of those up later, mm -hmm. so if you're curious about those, we'll try to have some video up and so you can watch them to your heart's content. Exactly. You can get a play-by-play. Play-by-play. In fact, we have some of, if you want to go back and look at some of the previous ones, we have a Board yes. of Supervisors session that's almost six hours. That's right. Just a touch under six hours. That is right. Now, that's, that's quality county governance, isn't that's it? That's right. <laughs> You're getting your money's worth. Yeah. You are getting your money's worth from our Board of Supervisors now. Now, as far as a little bit of rundown stuff, a little bit mm -hmm. of, um, I guess, little local announcement housekeeping type of things. It may be local announcement housekeeping no, today. It, it yes. is. My, it, it <laughs> might be. It was a little light on news today. It was. It was a little light on news, and, and sometimes that's a good thing. Yeah. That is a good thing. So... Um, you want to start with the sure. housekeeping? Sure. Okay. Well, I guess a couple little things. If you have internet access and you visit our site, mm -hmm. um, that we now have, we finally got all of our hot copper nights photos posted. Yes. So there's over a hundred of them there that you can do as a slideshow and just mm -hmm. let them go through and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. And there's also a little bit of video up there as well. That's right. Um, so if you care to look at that, it's now up. And the other, and the also the other one is we well, also we got. Well, we should a, talk about the video. Because the video is very interesting. Because you have a woman, actually, who's singing very well, I might add, a Stevie Nicks song. Well, most, in her defense, most of the songs they were doing were 50s period. Yes. Were 50s yes. period yes. stuff. And that just but happens it's to kind be. Of, it's kind of a cute little video. It I is. kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, it looks a little eclectic. Should I do the news in a poodle skirt? That would be eclectic too, <laughs> but it's actually it's worth it's worth watching because she she does a very good job. I just thought it was very interesting that she was singing a Stevie Nicks song yeah. while wearing a poodle yeah. skirt. And we also have um, some coverage up there of um, our Ironstone coverage for the weekend. Yes. Did I yes. cut away from Hot Copper Nights too quickly? No. no okay. No, no. All right. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> did, did my eyebrow <laughs> Yeah, um, we can go back if you would no, like. That's okay. okay, all right. Uh, and also, we uh, finally got some um, Ironstone coverage posted. Now, typically on Ironstone stuff, is they're very tight about video and mm -hmm. photo coverage. Um, typically, it's only the first few songs of a set, mm -hmm. and then during those, only the first thirty seconds of those first yes. few songs on a set. Yes. So. Um, that said, we have about 20 photos um, up, and it was um, kind of a recap of the weekend. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see if we can play something here. Let's, okay. Um, it'll, Sounds good. We will... It, the video probably won't... There we go. And this is just about... Look at that. There we go. There's a little bit of... A little tiny bit of Keb Mo and... Mm -hmm. Here we go. Little tiny bit of Kedmo. Audio's real low. There right? we go. And this is what we were trying to show here is that if you haven't attended a concert at Ironstone, they have really Very nice mm -hmm. big screen Very TVs. Good. So even if you're not close, you can in some still ways see. it's almost better, you know, because mm -hmm. it's more relaxing. They have really nice coverage. Um, UB40 did it. Did a great job. They were just a lot of fun. There was a lot of forty-something-year-olds that were kind of acting like they were twenty. Okay. And it was one of those those sort of nights. Yes, it was. And uh, you know, so that's um... <laughs> there we so go. So that was. So we'll back out of that, and we'll mm -hmm. you know. But it was actually a lot of fun. It was a really mm -hmm. a. Great concert, a lot of fun, and, um, and I don't think people realize, we were talking to a man from the valley, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of times locals, we tend to take Ironstone for granted. We do. Um, because you think of, oh yeah, all this traffic coming into town on some weekends or something like that, but then you have to realize what, um, what they can actually mean for the economy in, in the yes. area. It's a huge draw, but not only that, I think the other kind of interesting thing is we were talking to the guy from the Valley, and he mm -hmm. was saying 
that he's attended concerts at Shoreline, mm -hmm. at Arco, all over the place. And he says the best shows he's seen mm -hmm. have been Ironstone. Ironstone. He mm -hmm. says the combination of the relaxed atmosphere, uh, good, you know, good sound system, yes. good acoustics. It was, uh, mm -hmm. and I thought that was kind of interesting. So yeah. not only can Ironstone is probably the best venue in our area, mm -hmm. it's, it's one a, of the best around. Period. It is. It is. And it, but it's it's interesting if you've lived here any length of time, you remember what Ironstone was when it first got started. Right. And it was just sort of rocks. Just rocks. Rocks. Yeah. You know, and and what's interesting about it is. That, you know, we all heard these stories, oh, there's going to be an amphitheater, and you'd go out there, and there'd be sort of just sort of the core buildings, and you'd look out, and there would just be rocks, you know? <laughs> and now that's where the amphitheater is, and it's beautiful. Well, so it's I this think... whole sort of transition that um, it's been interesting to watch unfold. But I think this, doesn't this tie into a little bit of the uh, developer mentality? For example, um, the Coppertown center what mm -hmm. Castle and Cook is doing. Mm -hmm. And we were doing some research, a little bit of research today, uh, and I thought it was interesting because we went to the Castle and Cook site. And look, none of us are for willy-nilly growth because no. if the growth is done wrong, it ends up devaluing everything else around it mm -hmm. instead of enhancing it. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was really interesting. There's a, there was a quote from um, David Murdoch on the Murdoch. front of uh, on the front of this. And mm -hmm. it was um, in... And I thought it was really... And there's a saying, and I guess, uh, what was it in, this is David Murdoch, and this is, now Castle & Cook is a private company that yes. employs 67,000 people. Mm -hmm. It's one of those companies that sometimes kind of sneaks underneath the Absolutely. radar. And Absolutely. it is a huge, it is a huge, huge and basically. They build they, everywhere. And for example, in Hawaii, they own ba virtually the entire island of Lanai. Yes. The whole thing. And Dole food, Foods. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing. Um, but there's an interesting thing, is this is David's credo, mm -hmm. to do the impossible, you must see the invisible. Yes. See? Mm -hmm. So I think in some ways, it's this, um, oh, without getting all schmaltzy, and, uh, but I think there's such a thing with the people that, um, the, the big developers and stuff, not the mm -hmm. ones that are just cranking out track homes, mm -hmm. but the ones mm -hmm. that do things... You know what the Cowses did with Ironstone. They had exactly. to be a vision there. I mean, exactly. they had to know what they wanted to do when they mm -hmm. started. And mm -hmm. to everybody else, it probably looked like insanity. That's true. Yeah, That's I mean, you're going to build one of basically the largest combination winery entertainment complex mm -hmm. in the U.S. Yes. In Murphy's. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. That's true. That's <laughs> true. But and, I mean, what Murphy's was ten or fifteen years ago, it was a nice little small town, but it's very different now. Right. As most people who have been coming up for years would attest to. Right. I and mean, who've lived here for quite a while. Well, I mean, if, you're, if you look at what they have planned for copper, I mean, that's just the mm -hmm. start of oh, what they have yes. planned for copper. And yes. I think it's, um, you know, they've got some, lots of times they won't, they've got some big plans for down there. They do. And they I do. I've heard some lot. I heard one of the guys that used to be one of the golf golf pros um, mm -hmm. talking a couple of weeks ago and he actually thinks that their long-term goal is actually Palm Springs like so that's their oh yes you know definitely. that's their end game to mm -hmm. do something that is mm -hmm. that Palm Springs mixed with gold country type of exactly development so, Feeling. boy, did I get off on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> we just let him go like, woo. <laughs> and occasionally I should explain, if you see me look left off camera, what we're looking at is we're monitoring our feed to mm -hmm. make sure we're pushing the cable. That we're still, so you can still if you see, see me us. look left, it's not mm -hmm. just a twitch. Well, sometimes it, it can might be. be yes, but, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But actually coming back into... The News? district, actually yeah. up upstream, so to speak, up the highway, Vallecito Union School District starts tomorrow. Back in Back tomorrow. To so Hazel Fisher, Fisher Michelson. And, and Avery Middle School will be starting back to school tomorrow. Wow. So it is that time of year. And also Definitely. going farther up the hill. Mm -hmm. The Alpine County Chamber of Commerce is having an annual mixer and barbecue on Thursday night at yeah. 530. Mm-hmm. At the lodge swimming pool. So oh, if wow. you imbibe a little too much, you can just jump in the pool. <laughs> That's always frightening to me. People mix alcohol and swimming pools. I don't know why. That is just mm, mm, mm. a recipe for disaster, maybe. But it is a nice pool. It's a very big pool. Is it a big pool? It's a big pool. Oh, 
Okay. It well, is a big I, I'll take your word for okay. it because I've yes. never actually seen it. I so. walked past it a couple weeks ago when oh. we were up there for the Bear Valley Music Festival. Okay. You know, I was okay. like, wow, that's, that's, a, big that's a big pool. That's a big pool. Okay. And also, if you're following Board of Supervisors budget news, they will have their final budget hearings in the beginning of September. It's just, I can't believe the beginning of September is two weeks away. From Wednesday, September 5th, uh, actually Wednesday and Thursday, September 5th and September 6th at the Cal Works Sequoia Room in San Andreas. They will start at 9 a.m. and continue until they are completed. And also they finalized the tire policy. Well, this is something Sarah reported on last week, right? Mm -hmm. Sarah mm -hmm. was beat well, everyone actually, out of they, the gate yeah. on that. <laughs> now, this is the official press release this on the, the tire official, policy. Yes, and, and they actually have a date when this tire policy will actually begin, which is on September 14th. And at that time, you can take two tires to the facilities in the county that will accept them. And um, they will be for free. You can free. dispose of them for but free. But you can't dispose of four, only two. Only two. <laughs> yeah. If you have three, you have to take the third one home. <laughs> so <laughs> that's sort of how it is. But it is good. You know, which is it, a good thing. And one thing I think that's good about that the county is doing well is the trash policy, if you compare that to surrounding counties. We actually have a really good trash collection system in this county and have done for years. Because if you look at Tuolumne what, 10, County, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. back roads of Tuolumne County, they're kind of littered and strewn with couches and, yes, and stuff this like and that. Yes, and that and the other thing. But uh, it was, my gosh, what was it, about eight years ago that the state said that each county had to recycle 50% of their their solid waste. And Tuolumne County's approach is just you throw it you out throw and let it, it decompose. That's into right. It. No, it's, it's called direct recycling. No, exactly. Just kidding. Instead of no, indirect we're gonna, recycling. No, we're going to get nasty comments from Tuolumne County. It's a new direct recycling policy. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Um, also, we've had some requests from some people. If you're visiting our site, we made some changes today. And on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. we're going to start putting some links to some of the recent videos that have had a lot of traffic, mm -hmm. but also some of the classic ones. Uh, for example, we have links to the one last year when they were setting the, the, the chairlift poles of bear by That's helicopter, right. mm -hmm. one from the Sierra Century highlights. These aren't necessarily topical news but, but just ones, just videos that have just kind of got a lot of traffic. Um, Do you have Frogman in there? We didn't have Frogman. Oh, I should put Frogman in, frog okay. in there. Frogman in there. Frogman is a very cool. For example, cool if you're coming thing. up to the area, you want to see what you know the parades are like. We have links mm -hmm. to this year's Arnold Independence Day parade. Mm -hmm. We have the, uh, you know the. The chairlift interviews last from last year. There's also yeah. one with that four, 1942 vintage frog jump video that's, right. that's, that's a little right. bit of a link to that so if you want to see mm -hmm. some little interesting things that we hope the irish days parade mm -hmm. you can just go on the there site you go. and uh and there's even an interview with sarah with uh congressman lundgren that's right congressman lundgren so and there's you even one that. and we even did one game on there bret hart boys it was playoff basketball from this mm -hmm. last year Mm -hmm. And this was one of those games that was just a good game. I mean, mm -hmm. they were just, it was, at the end of the game, everyone was exhausted. You know, <laughs> just you know, from people watching, watching the game. everything else. So, anyway. Definitely, and also, definitely. a little thing is we got an email today. Okay. Can I sure. go on? Okay. Mm -hmm. I did, she's, you know, she's, she's a tough taskmaster <laughs> telling me to watch my schedule here. But um, the site of the, um, on, we have this as our site of the day. It's for the Sierra Logging Museum, mm -hmm. and they have also revamped their site so they not they only have, have mm -hmm. uh, museum-specific stuff, mm -hmm. they now have a lot more history, area history, so there's a lot more narrative and a mm -hmm. lot more additional, and we're working on a little second screen here, but let's see if we can pull up... Uh, pull up the Logging Museum. And this is be this is this is really scintillating TV. It's called watching people type. This is just. Uh, <laughs> but there is a lot of history that the Sierra Nevada Logging Museum actually brings together for people. I mean, people who are new to the area don't really realize the great logging history there was, or there is here in the county, and logging is still the second agricultural product. Yeah. Next to cattle. 
in yeah. the county. So, you know, logging is still a viable... And this really celebrates the history. And they're going to have mm-hmm. a coming, their, lo- their, uh, jambor- their logging jamboree in a couple weeks. Labor Day um, weekend. Mm-hmm. So, whoops. I put it on the wrong stream, screen. So let's see okay, here. Let's, let's see, see if we can... Uh, um, da, 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 da. Did that work? Um, no, oh, we no. still have our little ironstone video there. See, see yeah. I should have it so I just have a mirrored screen, but right now I have it, so it's... There we go. All right. There we go. And here's a new that. site, and this is more of a blog-style site. Hopefully yes. you can see it a little bit. But they have mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff now down the right-hand mm-hmm. side where they have um, they cookbooks, have, mm-hmm. how to do, you know, history. So it's a very, very nice site. And go explore. Mm-hmm. Now there's a lot of stuff that you can explore and go wander around on the Sierra Nevada Logging Museum site. Look at this. They have true stories. True stories. Camp cooks had rules. As opposed to, they did. As, a, as opposed to ones that aren't true? My first love affair. Was with a tree? Is that? I don't know. There we go. The, Camp the, cooks the had day rules. I, an evening with Doc and the day I met Doc. There we go. And a woman's point of view. Camp cooks it from Lars and yeah. See, there's all kinds of stuff yeah, on there. Yeah, so this is so very cool. That is our little site of the day and kind of mm-hmm. local tidbit stuff. So yes. if you want to go on there, it's it is Sierra Logging Museum dot com or org. Org. It's probably org. No, it's, it's com. Uh, probably with both of them will get there. We better make this. I don't make know. sure we get this right. Sometimes when they, there's a com instead of an org, easy, you easy can one is just go to the pine and, the pine tree dot net and yes. click it. Yes. Because it may be like whitehouse.com versus... Yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Go dot gov, right? Or is it org? It's for those gov. Of, for those of you that didn't know, oh. there was a kind of a long-running joke on the web that if you went to whitehouse.gov, you were okay. Yes. If you want, went That's to actually White House... actually White House. Yes, whitehouse.com or dot org or net, anything else. It made, the house may have been white, but everything yes. else was various shades of blue. Yeah, yeah. Well, like triple X. Yeah. Double X. Yes, but I think the government has since bought all those domains. I hope so. Yes, they have. I hope so. so. <laughs> in one of the offices I worked in, um, a woman was trying to access the White House, and she put .com instead of .gov, and all Uh-oh. of a sudden you heard her go, "Oh my gosh, I can't!" <laughs> And then she had to, you know, call the assembly rules committee and go. I didn't mean to go on that site. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Yeah. Um, And she was like, "How do I get off of it?" And also a little um, kind of thing on Murphy's tonight. A little update Mm -hmm. on the Alchemy Wine Market, which was recently under new ownership, Mm -hmm. and the man that purchased it was came from Carmel, and he has a lot of nice ideas and stuff Mm -hmm. for it. And they're also going to start a winemakers dinner every Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. So. This and tonight they have a winemaker's dinner at Alchemy from mm-hmm. six to nine PM every Tuesday night. And also the MC Trio with Matt Cullen, uh, Don mm-hmm. McDowell and Kim Manuel is are tonight. playing tonight. Yes, they are so, playing tonight. So that's there you something go. to go to if you uh, feel so inclined this evening. And also on the Pine Tree net, if you didn't like tonight's news, you can always watch last night's. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little more newsy. <laughs> but uh, actually, talking about Calaveras County budget, of course, counties are required by law to pass a budget. Right. The um, state has actually passed a budget. No way. Yes, yes, a $145 billion budget plan. And um, the That's headline really scary reads, when that starts sounding small. $145 billion is a lot of You're money. You're right, it it's is. It's a lot of money. Uh, California lawmakers ended the nation's longest budget impasse Tuesday, agreeing to a $145 billion spending plan that eliminates the state's persistent deficit and addresses the myriad concerns of holdout Republicans. The deal emerged quickly after the Assembly and Senate failed to agree on a budget late Monday night and ends a stalemate that has lasted more than seven weeks beyond the start of the fiscal year. And as, as I said on Monday night, we were also the, the state was three billion dollars in the hole in the red trying to uh, make yeah. you know yeah. do their thing while this budget impasse began. And actually, if I can find this, I thought was a very interesting one. If you'll remember, 
I believe it was last Thursday, mm -hmm. I was talking about the electoral vote. Yes. And uh, right now we are winner takes all state, and there is a movement afoot to a make foot? it afoot yeah. <laughs> to uh, divide the electoral votes of California dependent on congressional district. So if a particular congressional district wins Democrat, that electoral vote will go to the Democrats. Well, that's a much and more equitable system. It is. Whether everybody's happy with it or not. <laughs> mm -hmm. But this is a really interesting headline. Field, field poll shows Californians lean toward dividing electoral votes. California voters are inclined to support a proposed ballot initiative that would change how the Golden State allocates I think that's, its I think electoral that's real. votes. It makes us mm -hmm. matter. I mean, it really, it does. instead it, of just a winner take all, because. Yes. Well, also, it would, it would tend to engender a better voter turnout as well. Oh, absolutely. Because there's a lot of people that if they don't think their candidate's going to carry the state, they're just. They just don't go vote. Yeah. That's right. And let's see, five months. Or at least the convention. It's entirely possible that California's voters will effectively decide the presidential contents contest five months earlier by passing judgment on this ballot measure. So it should be um, because we are we have the largest in the nation block of electoral votes. Oh yeah, without a doubt, fifty-five electoral votes. Absolutely. And I thought it was kind of interesting um, to segue in a couple little, a couple little national pieces. Mm -hmm. um, the o, um, OIG, the Office of Inspector General, has come out with a report that faults and lays the blame for 9/11 basically directly on the CIA. And oh really? I think that I didn't um, hear that. And this is and this is kind of an interesting oh, okay. thing to where, and obviously this, there's plenty of blame to go around on mm -hmm. that one, but. I think there is such a thing that, you know, at least from their perspective, the CAA should have known better. And it's oh, a, um, okay. you know, kind of a, an interesting interesting piece. And kind of our odd news is, did you see the one about the bear report? Oh, this one's kind of kind of icky. Um, no. No, there was um, over in Russia. Well, it's in Belgrade. Uh, let's see, what was it, Yugoslavia? Anyway, it was over in the Eastern Bloc somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, in the Belgrade Zoo, zookeepers found a naked, half-eaten man Ooh. inside the bear enclosure. Ooh. Two adult bears, Marsha and Misha, had dragged the body to their feeding corner, reacted angrily when keepers tried to recover it. So wow. they, wanted to, they wanted to keep their man. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, you know... And it, this is one of those things that there was a beer festival underway near the zoo. So somebody probably did one of those drunken... Drunken... Thought this would be a good idea. Thought this would be really fun. Let's go see the bears. Yes. And he ended up being... Bear food. Dinner. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Wow. That's really... And I thought that was... Uh, <laughs> thought that was a little, little disturbing in a lot of ways, but... Um, how did you find that? Huh? How did you find that? Well, just you kind of the odd stuff, stuff, you know? Oh, and also another one on, national, on uh, international news as well. And this is one that is really, if this one's true, then it, 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 we got issues. Mm -hmm. uh, leaflet said to warn of Iran move into North Iraq. Ooh, um, so they're good. trying to ascertain the, mm -hmm. you know, the validity of the, you know, the, if they're accurate or not, or exactly. that's or it's just a hoax. Exactly. But um, basically, hundreds of villagers have fled their homes in Iraq's mountainous northwest, northeast while there was hidden caves after what local authorities said was days of intermittent shelling by Iran across the board, oh, border. Oh, wow. So this is, this is, it's ugly over it's, there. It is getting uglier. And the but space it, shuttle made it home? I know, which yeah. is very cool. Very cool. And a lot of people watched it online, apparently. Oh really? Yes, I didn't. I, I should. I had I had read that somewhere, and also, con congressional approval rating is at its it lowest. Is, it is so abysmal. low. It is eighteen percent approval rating in Congress. Now I guess this is really in a weird turn of events. What isn't Bush's rating about thirty-five or thirty-six? Mm -hmm. So his is double theirs. Yes, that <laughs> that's interesting. And so everybody's low. You know? Yeah, they just want to throw the whole thing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I thought this was interesting, though. Um, apparently, liberals read more books than conservatives. I believe that. 
And one in four read no, read no books last year. One in four people did not read a book last year. Well, I, I have to admit, too, that... See, I used to be a voracious reader. I mean, at least one full book a week. That was my... Really? One full book? But well, they were I mean, biographies, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I used to literally three or four hundred pages a week. That was my, you know, day, week in, week out. No, it was just what I did. You know, wow. I, and that wasn't really that much. But it was... Um, yeah, I can say I haven't probably haven't read a full book in the last two years. Oh, I've read full books, but they're not biographies mostly. I read a lot. <laughs> well, you know, but it's all the staring at this little exactly, screen. Exactly, yes. exactly. The internet has changed the way that people read. Yes. So they sort of read sporadically. They just read a little here and a little there. Well, if it's isn't a need or curiosity driven reading because you know mm -hmm. the nice thing about the web is you can find anything you want whenever you want to find it. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If a kid has a homework question or something like that, you can always find it. You can find it, exactly. And the interesting thing is since I've used, started using the computer more, my IQ has probably dropped in half because <laughs> I no longer have to know anything, right? Not that I did before, but... <laughs> okay. Now it's just like, oh, it's Google says. <laughs> I don't know, but I can type it. <laughs> But, Sorry, uh, I didn't, yeah. Anyway, one in four read, <laughs> read no books last year. Although, you know, okay, one in four is 25%, right? So that's still 75% of the people read books. Yes. Which is, you could say which, that's pretty... That's pretty good. I, I was just thinking this because about, mm, about eight years ago, I read a study that said only 18% of people read one book the year prior. Wow. So... So it's actually going up. Reading it looks exactly. like it's going up. Oh, compared to what I go. read about eight years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess um, the other little thought was a weird little help thing mm -hmm. is so if you have a little spare tire, a little bit of paunch around the middle, mm -hmm. it's we not your fault. We mentioned I know. this yesterday. I know. Yeah. But here's the piece. I'm sorry. We mentioned this on Monday. <laughs> yes, Monday. Sarah Monday. drove. This is where the, they're saying that viruses drive obesity, and this is the article on it. So Health News Day, news research is bolstering the theory that obesity may stem at least in part from a common virus that helps create new healthier fat cells. The roots of obesity are probably complex and various. However, their lab test showed that exposure to adenovirus 36, kind of like adipose tissue, is that the yeah, yeah, anyway. Oedipus. Right. Uh, yeah, I think which causes Oedipus. respiratory and eye infections, also causes stem cells to develop into fat cells. So that's oh. that's what happened. Okay. To me. That's that's what they say. See, I I still <laughs> think it's calories in, calories out. Yeah, there's probably some of that too. Back to the old '80s adage: calories in, calories out. Well, I thought it was really funny one time, and it, well, kind of not funny. It was. It was a, a, a talk show interview with Farrah Fawcett. And this mm -hmm. is the time she was young and, you know. Attractive. Yeah. But she still is attractive. Right. But, you know, she, and basically they had, Farrah, how do you stay so thin? And she said, deadpan. Well, I consume fewer calories than I burn. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Just like you know, it was like it was a silence. It was just like somebody dropped a ball. You know, it's just like, well, how, where do you take that? If you're a talk show host, you're looking for the glib answer, something you can work <laughs> off of. You know, it's like, wow, that's really good. And you know, how many hours? Didn't say anything. How much she exercised, anything like that. She just basically said, I consume more calories. I consume fewer calories than I burn. <laughs> that's it. That was it. Just a dead but one she's sentence. She's right. Yeah, but nobody wants to hear that. Yeah, but it's the truth. <laughs> And actually, we, we should do the we weather do, uh -oh. really fast. Oh, no. Okay, okay. Arnold weather, weather. We better just... Wednesday, 91 degrees. Thursday, 90 degrees. And Friday, 90 degrees. And I don't know if I can get my screen to move. No, no we better go down and do... Um, we're going to say, let's do... We'll do this really quick because we've got a 15-second weather. That's right. And um, it is going to be... It's warm and getting warmer. No, just kidding. <laughs> Murphy's. All right. This is going to be for most of the area. Murphy's high of 96. 96 Ooh, on Thursday. Hot. 95 on Friday. So mid to upper 90s That's with right. an occasional... And good night. And we good will night. see you tomorrow night. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night.